My name is Steve Maruzzi. I'm the National Training Manager for Lars Heating Systems. Today we're going to cover the mascot FT and the most common error codes. We're going to start with how to identify error codes. So you get to a job and you see error codes on the screen and they're flashing. There may be one, there may be several error codes, but you won't know that until you go through the boiler's memory, the error code history, and view them. So what we're going to do here is show you that there is an error code 35 and an error code 80 on the screen. Let's go ahead and view the remaining error codes if there are more. Turn the power button to the boiler off. Press and hold the select button for five seconds or more. And the screen will come back up with error codes. Press to enter because you do want to read the error codes. And then you can simply scroll through all of the error codes that may be in the spoilers history. So first off, we'll start with error code 10 and error code 11. Error code 10 is the flame has extinguished eight times. Error code 11 is ignition failed 10 times. And it's all about air, fuel, and spark. We'll start with checking gas pressure. So here, I'm showing a gas valve on a 140 model. Uh, and this is its location on the wall on 140. And on the gas valve, I've highlighted and enlarged this for you, you'll see you have two taps. One reads in and one reads out. Loosen your needle valve with the um, Allen key or Torx bit. Just loosen it, don't take it out, and now you can put your manometer over that and read your incoming gas pressure. And the incoming gas pressure for natural gas should be between three and a half and 10 inches of water column. And for propane, eight to 13 inches. And this is right on your nameplate of your boiler. Now here we're showing for natural gas, 6.8 inches of water column. And again, this is on the incoming barb to your gas valve, okay? So your gas line is gonna come in and that barb that's closest to the incoming line, that's where you're gonna get your reading. Now also I wanna talk about, we should never see greater than a one inch drop on light off and running of the boiler. So here, if we're sitting idle called static gas pressure, and it's reading 6.8. When it's running or lighting off, we should not drop below 5.8. Next, we'll talk about is spark. So checking the igniter and the transformer. With power on to the boiler, but no call for heat, we're going to remove two wires to the ignition transformer. Next, we'll insert the meter leads. and give the boiler a call for heat or a demand. Now, what we're looking for is roughly 120 volts, but keep in mind, we haven't gone the ignition sequence yet. Keep in mind, you're gonna have a short ignition period, so don't be fooled by a false reading. When you hear the gas valve energize and the boiler go into ignition, as of right now, here we're reading 118.5 volts that's telling us the ignition transformer is being energized, but it's only energized in three second intervals. So it'll give you multiple tries for ignition. So again, just confirm as we're showing here that we have the 120 volts or close to 120 volts to the ignition transformer. We're gonna go ahead and remove that igniter with power off to the boiler, remove those spark plug wires there is no polarity to these spark plug wires, so while reinstalling them, no concern as to which one goes to which terminal. We're going to be removing these four millimeter screws at the top of the igniter. And then reaching in for that igniter, remember, tilt that igniter toward the center of the boiler because there is an angle to that igniter and that gasket will come off with the igniter as well. Look at the quality of that gasket. If you need to replace it, please do so. We're gonna take a look at any corrosion, any buildup of debris that may be on this igniter. Here on this one, you're seeing a little discoloration. What we would do at that point is take a non-abrasive cloth a dollar bill works fine for this, and we're going to go ahead and clean that igniter. Clean the two 
electrodes for that igniter. Take a look at the gap of that igniter. It's three to four millimeters, which equates to one eighth to one quarter of an inch gap from electrode to electrode. When you're ready to reinstall that igniter, put the gasket back on the igniter. And again, while reassembling, start in on that angle and come all the way down. And then you can go ahead and put your screws back in and tighten carefully. That igniter does have a ceramic base to it, so please do not over tighten. Just make that snug. And of course, finally, replace your ignition spark plug wires. And again, as a reminder, there is no polarity to this being that it is a DC voltage. So we've talked about gas pressure. We've talked about checking the igniter and cleaning the igniter if needed. Also consider inspecting your burner. Um, now your burner here, we're showing an image of wood chip. Uh, we've seen all kinds of things on top of the burners. Most commonly is PVC shavings from the installation where someone's cutting PVC pipe with a sawzall or what have you. And those shavings get pulled into the blower and then spit into the burner and they will plug up your burner as shown here. You'll see these wood chips and wood shavings plugging up the burner. So Erico 10 and 11 can also be a dirty burner. Um, so be careful and you want to pull the blower and arm out of position. I'm showing that quickly here. Uh, we do have a video also available that shows you how to go through and, and what nuts to take off, etc but I'm just showing pulling the blower with the arm and the top plate for the burner itself. Removal of the burner plate is best done with a small screwdriver. You'll notice that there is a notch in the very front of that burner plate. Insertion of the screwdriver into that notch and you can lift the burner plate out of position from the top of the boiler. Here you're seeing those PVC shavings that Steve mentioned earlier. So here are some that are not burnt off, and here are some that started to melt and burn off. And what happens is they will actually plug these orifice holes, and you won't get proper firing. So keep in mind, you should be checking that, um, especially on the error code 10 and 11. Now, also, not very common, but if the burner's clean, you've got gas, ignition, check your gas orifice. And things can get plugged up inside here in the gas orifice. The longer one is for the 140 model, as shown here, and your smaller one is on the 199 models. Check the orifices. Again, not very common, but one winter we had a couple of complaints on the startup of the heating season. Um, in spider's nests, this is more common in a heat-only model. Why do I say that? Because during the summer months, a combi boiler will operate for potable or domestic hot water. However, in the summer months, they sit idle. And around the fall, you'll have spiders trying to make their winter's webs. Very common in outdoor barbecued grills and what have you. So on a couple of occasions, we have seen this, and that is enough to hold back your fuels so your air-fuel mixture is off, and you will not get proper ignition. Also, checking the combustion air intake. And here's one that the kid was playing outside and decided to drop a plastic Easter egg uh, or a plastic egg inside the combustion air vent. And where did that end up? Right at the combustion air intake for the boiler itself. Also, error code 10 and 11. On the 140 models, we'll actually have a screen on the outlet side of the blower. So a lot of the debris will get caught up here. Uh, and where is that location? It's right between the blower and the burner arm. Uh, so you will have to remove the nut and bolts to gain access to that. And we have found all kinds of things. I'm showing an image here of PVC shavings, for example. Other things are dryer lint. We've had bugs, grass clippings. All of those things can plug up your burner as, as well, or the screen on the 140 models. Next, we'll talk about error code 16, which is operating temperatures above 203 degrees Fahrenheit. This is about pump flow or flow-related issues. So we're going to talk about checking the pump. Testing the pump. 
What we're showing here is the pump location on a Mascot FT Combi 140. First off, we want to make sure power is onto the boiler. Give yourself a call for heat. With a call for heat, we're going to measure 120 volts at the Molex plug. Here you can see we have roughly 118 volts. So we have power going to the pump. If you don't have 120 volts at this Molex connector, follow this connector. There is a short extension piece that also plugs in to another Molex connector going to the control board. So confirm that. It is in behind the cross member bar. So you can reach up inside uh, and look for that connection. Make sure that connection is good and tight. Uh, if not, you may have to replace the control board. So here we're showing pump location of an FT199. Once you've assured that you do have power to that pump, 120 volts, what we'd like you to do is power off the boiler, come back into that pump with a flat blade screwdriver, and remove the plug from the back of that pump. Inside of there, you're going to see that pump shaft. I'd like you to take a screwdriver to the flat of that pump shaft, and turn that pump shaft to ensure that the pump is not bound. Now, that is a square slot. So again, you're really going to have to use a flathead screwdriver to try and get in there and just make sure it's loose or not bound, OK? If not, then you'll have to replace the pump itself. Next, we'll talk about is error code 20, condensate switch is open. Check your condensate drain. Confirm we have a vent on the condensate pipe and check for blockage or a blocked neutralizer kit. Now, we provide with the mascot boiler, the wall hung, we do provide a condensate hose. And that condensate hose has a little vacuum breaker and a um, clip that you would just put it into position. However, in some cases, people have used PVC vent or PVC um, to use it to make a vent as shown here. And hard pipe with no vent will give us an error code 20. That means your condensate is backing up. You do need the vent. Um, so in that example, they would have had to put T in here and extend that up a little bit so water doesn't drain out. So keep that in mind. We do need a vent. So if you've got an error code 20, check for blockage. Uh, if not, check to see if they did not use our condensate hose and they did hard piping. Make sure there is a vent in that hose itself. I'm also going to play a little video here of removing the condensate trap. The condensate trap constructed of two pieces, the lower cleanout that can be removed. You will have some water in that cleanout. Clean out the bottom drain cover. You can reach that up into the bottom of the boiler. Once your condensate hose connection has been removed and that condensate comes out in one piece. Turn it over. Assure that your bottom hole in that condensate is free of debris and that the float inside travels freely. Also, check for white substance. Um, white substance, almost like a milky substance. Here we're showing a neutralizer kit where it's plugged. Inside the condensate trap, you'll have this white slimy sludge. Uh, or at the bottom of the heat exchanger where it goes into the condensate trap. And what that is, that's cross-contamination. That is flue gases coming back to the combustion side of the boiler. And on our heat exchanger, it is a fire tube. It is a stainless steel fire tube heat exchanger. However, the core of the fire tube itself has some aluminum. And why aluminum? Because aluminum transfers heat faster than stainless steel. And what you'll see with cross-contamination, you could get some breakdown. And that is just the um, cause of what you're seeing here. So if you're seeing this, clean everything out and then identify the vent. So here I'm showing an example of a vent system where it's incorrect. First of all, your exhaust should always be above your combustion air. And in this example, it's just the opposite. The exhaust is below the combustion air. And you can see the plume. And at times, that plume will get drawn in and then break down. 
giving us that white substance. So check for cross-contamination. Also, cross-contamination will play all kinds of havoc on any manufacturer's ignition, burner, etc. Um, so you really need to identify the vent scenario in that example. Next, we'll talk about is error code 40, gas leak detector. And that's telling us that basically we have a gas leak in the cabinet or in close proximity of the boiler itself, or it could be off gases, adhesives, sealants during construction, etc. So inside the boiler, you're going to have a control panel. And right on the control panel, there is a gas leak detector, or I'll refer to it as a sniffer. So if this senses any off gases or sealant or a gas leak, it will shut the boiler down, not allowing it to come on. So identify that. Now also, we had a case where somebody had PVC shavings and they took the blower off and we have a gasket and that gasket did not go back into position. And what happens was flue gases or not even flue gases, it was air fuel mixture that was getting blown out into the cabinet, giving us a gas leak. Okay, so identify that. If anybody has pulled the burner plate and didn't put it back properly, we need that sealed. So um, here you're seeing removal of the very large gasket that acts as the. Uh, so that is one of the gaskets. There's two types of gaskets. Uh, there's a black flat type gasket and also a red circular gasket that fits into a groove. So make sure that those are in position. If anybody has pulled those out, uh, and we're not blowing gases back into the cabinet. So here is our top plate back into position. And if that's not sealed, keep in mind, we're bringing combustion air into a mixing station. We also have fuel coming into that mixing station that gets drawn into the blower and then down into the arm. That will blow out inside the cabinet. And if, the, if it's sealed on the front half, but not on the back, you'll get some leakage in the back and that leak gas leak detector will go off. Next, we'll talk about is Erica 41. Fan speed too high with the flame on. Check your combustion air and venting for proper installation or blockage. If everything checks out, you can then contact the factory. And here's a perfect example, cold climate, um, snow level. So in a snow drift or snow storm, your combustion air and vent can get plugged and give us the error code. Next we'll talk about is error code 44, and that is the air pressure sensor. Again, check your venting installation first. Um, most manufacturers see a lot of installation problems with the venting, as well as us, and we could see that 44 error code. I'll show you some examples of this in a minute. But also check for blockage. And if so, if everything checks out, then contact the factory. Now, in our manual, we have installations for sidewall venting, roof venting, etc. I'm going to show you one example of three that are in the manual. And right here, I'm going to use the right-hand image. This is a sidewall uh, vent scenario. And what we have is the combustion air intake, again, is always below our exhaust. So we want a 90 to combustion air down in this example. And we can come up in gooseneck if we had to on the exhaust, a minimum of 12 inches, okay? So you can come up if you had to two feet or 18 inches or even 32 inches. And then 90 straight out away from the dwelling. Never 90 back down. If you did, what would happen? Flu gases would travel down and get drawn right back into the combustion air intake. So, um, talking about a good separation and straight out away from the dwelling. The left-hand image here was showing the same sidewall venting. It talks about a minimum of 12-inch separation horizontally. So we're coming out for the combustion air intake, 12 inches away is the exhaust, with a minimum of 12 inch up and then outside the dwelling. Now, <clears throat> error code 44. Again, the combustion air and exhaust vent must have at least a 12 inch separation, both horizontally and vertically. And here we're showing a multi-dwelling complex that had, um, they put a T-fitting on the exhaust. And we're okay with the T-fitting, especially in a high wind condition. However, Combustion air, look at how close this is. It's roughly four inches apart. And at, in low fire, flu gases travel out the top, but they'll also come out the bottom. What do they do? They get drawn right back into the combustion air intake, giving us cross-contamination. Also, a big concern, and we see a lot of these issues, is with dryer vents, especially out the back of a house. 
um, and drier vents too close to the combustion air intake, what happens? That lint over the course of a year is just going to get drawn in and plug up your burner or the screen, which we'll talk about. And here is an image of a 140 model number with that screen uh, with dryer lint plugging it up and ultimately gave them a 44 error code. If you're also seeing any type of blockage on the screen or the burner, check the squirrel cage on the blower, okay? Um, because they can collect there as well. Most commonly, again, dryer lint, bugs, grass clippings, etc. Uh, those are the things that could plug up or PVC shavings. That is very common, especially on startup. Somebody turns on the switch after the install and you can hear the PVC shavings getting drawn right through the vent into the mixing station and then get sucked into the blower eventually into the burner. So keep that in mind. Again, error code 44, check for blockage, snow. Um, and how it reads is you're supposed to be 12 inches above anticipated snow level. And a lot of jobs, they don't. Um, example, in New England, if your anticipated snow level is two feet or three feet, your exhaust and combustion air vent is supposed to be a foot above that. And in most cases, they're not. So in snowstorms, these will plug up. Now, here's a job we'll talk about. And the complaint was the boiler runs fine in the spring, summer, or warm winter days. And what this was is a combi boiler. And that's why they would run it for domestic hot water in the spring, summer, or warm winter days. However, in the cold weather, the boiler locked out in a 44 error code. So looking at this vent scenario, what do we see? We see the exhaust down here in the combustion air up top. That's wrong. Your exhaust is always above your combustion air intake. And in this example, what was happening is there's a window well here. So the exhaust was getting blown into the window well. It gets drawn up and sucked right back into the combustion air intake, giving us cross-contamination. However, the 44 error code was being caused by the actual ice that was building up on the combustion air intake. Okay? So this was actually looking like a hockey puck, if you will. This was totally blocked from ice during cold days. Why? Because flue gases have a high moisture content. And when they're getting drawn right back in, that's going to freeze up, giving you an error code 44. Here's another job. And again, exhaust is down here and combustion air is up top. That's wrong. Exhaust should always be above the combustion air intake. And why did they install a trap here? Why did they use two 90-degree fittings? And ultimately, the trap was getting full with condensate, blocking the combustion air intake, giving us a 44 error code. And what happened here was during the installation, the inspector, they weren't 12 inches off the ground. Again, you're supposed to be 12 inches above your anticipated snow level. But in this example, the inspector just said, well, you're not 12 inches off the ground. So what they did was they added two 90s, an extension piece, and then a cap. So how did water get in here with a cap? Your exhaust gases traveling up get drawn back in and eventually condensed inside this pipe, filling the pipe with water, giving you a 44 error code. So inspect the vents, okay? Um, very, very common. Also, here's another one, a blockage in the air intake loop. And this was from a spray foam can. And some broke free and got sucked into the combustion air intake and ultimately made it to the mixing station, giving us a blockage and a 44 error code. Here's another one with debris in the boot. During this installation, they hung the boiler on the wall and they had not vented it yet. So during construction, construction's taken place above the boiler and all of the debris was getting down inside the combustion air intake in the exhaust. Eventually, when they went to start it, all this debris and stuff get pulled right into the mixing station. Here's another one and it looks like um, little uh, packing nuts, if you will. Um, Keep in mind, if anything gets drawn into this and gets chewed up and spit out, where does it end up? In this example, because it was a 140, you have the mesh screen. Where did that end up? Right here, giving them an error code 44. Next, we'll talk about is error code 72. Flame is detected prior to ignition. Now, how is that possible? Well, on a few examples, there has been dust, sawdust, in this example, we've got um, sawdust, if you will, all on the top of the burner. 
Now, if you were to run this boiler for a while, and that burner plate gets hot, and eventually these little pieces of wood or sawdust will start to burn and melt, and they'll glow cherry red. And the optical eye senses this. So after shutdown, it's still glowing. And the optical eye sees this. And on the next call for heat, we'll give you the error code. So what we're going to do here is remove the optical eye. We've loosened the screws, taken the bracket up. Uh, we'll remove the screws. And the only reason I'm showing you this optical flame sensor is just to see. We put a flashlight in there. So any glowing that would take place, that optical eye would see that. So a dirty burner can cause this error code. Next, we'll talk about error code 80. The air in the system is error code 80. So confirm that all air is removed from the heat exchanger. And we're showing the combi boiler here. Very simply, you can give a boiler a call for heat. Use your on-off rocker switch. Toggle the boiler on for 30 seconds. Toggle it off, and that pump can kick on and help to move and push the air out the vent. So loosen the cap and allow all that air to come out the vent. Also, if you don't have any air in the system and you want to check your low water cutoff, Here's your low water cutoff location. So we have a built-in auto reset low water cutoff. Um, and do not just grab the wire and try and pull it out. There is a little tab right there and we're showing a flathead screwdriver pushing on the tab. Uh, you will break the spade connector if you just grab this with a pair of linemans or needle nose pliers and try and pull it right out. Um, so you have to push on that little metal tab right there and then you can remove it. And I mentioned to you that the low water cutoff is an auto reset. So ground it to the chassis. And here we're showing you grounding it to the top plate. Or you can do it right here on the metal where the low water cutoff is. And that way it identifies if the error code 80 goes away, that's telling you your control board is good. Maybe your low water cutoff is bad. Next, error code 94. Exhaust sensor, vent temperature reached 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So error code 94, we have an exhaust sensor right here with a Phillips head screw. And you can very simply remove the sensor and inspect that sensor. Now also, I want to talk about down inside the uh, connector, if you will, um, there is an extension piece. So we have a Molex connectors right here inside behind the plastic. And open that up and identify that Molex connection. Now, the Molex is used on earlier models. Uh, we did have a couple of issues where the wires weren't tight, and it would give us this error code 94. So we're just going to show you real quick. The latest version of model uh, has a different Molex, so we should not still be seeing this problem. But I did want to just identify this for you. So pull the Molex apart. And now check your wires. And in some cases, these wires could very simply pull out of position. And if that's the case, we need to make sure they're inserted properly. And if they don't hold into position properly, uh, here we're just showing doing a, a continuity or resistant reading. Uh, as long as you get some type of continuity here, uh, it's telling you your connection's good and the sensor is okay. Um, or the connection to the sensor is good. Now, if the wire does come out, you can try and open that tab slightly and then put it back into position by very simply pushing it back into the Molex connector. And you can use your meter lead to push on the back side of it to make sure it seats properly. And then just give a very slight tug on the wires and make sure that they're in position properly. Okay. And that's it. Thank you for your time. We look forward to uh, seeing you on the next uh, video or Lars Academy Live. Thank you.